Hi everyone, Pierre from P2 Design here. In this video, we will finish our animation by animating the arms of our character. Let's get started. As what we have done before, animating the arm will be pretty straightforward. The first thing I will do is rotate the arm so that it's kind of in a rest position. The idea will be to animate the arm using arrow key, meaning that we will first animate the top of the arm, then the forearm, finally the end and the fingers. We will be only animating the left side and then symmetrize the animation on the underside. But first I need to set my keyframe to Bezier so that I can play with the curve. If you don't remember it, it's the T shortcut. Now I need to figure which rotation channel will allow me to swing the arm back and forth. In this case, it's gonna be the Y axis. From there, from the position of the left foot, I will swing the arm. Whenever the left foot is forward, the arm will be backward. And whenever the left foot is backward, the arm will be forward. I will simply create a sinusoidal curve shape to animate a back and forth motion. To identify the position of my extreme, I will look at the left foot and whenever it's in its extreme position, so at frame zero, I will slightly offset the position of my extreme value for the arm. So I will go on frame two, for example, and swing the arm back. I will then use the same method to identify when I have to swing my arm forward and I will just move my keyframe accordingly. You also obviously need to watch your animation. Making everything logically will help you going forward, but then it's your eye that will make the difference. Once I'm happy with the swing position, I will just align the first and latest keyframes. Also check that I'm not doing an extreme movement of the arm because on top of this we will add the forearm swing and then the end swing and the finger swing. So if you go too extreme at the very beginning, your animation may look a bit messy. Plus it will be very easy to amplify the curve later on if we want more motion. Once I was happy with the swinging motion, I've been working slightly on the x-axis rotation to add a bit of in and out motion, meaning that I wanted the arm to go inward when it was at its extreme position forward and also a bit inward when it was at its extreme back position. In between, when it was in a passing position, I wanted it to be slightly offset compared to the body position. Honestly, this doesn't bring a lot to the table, so you can skip this step if you want. As usual, I will make sure that the first and the last keyframe are the same. Since those are two flat keyframes, I don't need to rotate their different axes. Then I will be working on the forearm motion. So by default, your forearm will rotate only on one axis. I think in this case, it was the Z Euler rotation. So I will just make kind of the same rotation as I did before, but with a slight offset. And what I mean is an offset in time. But first I need to convert those keyframes to Bezier. So I will unhide everything. Press T and select Bezier because they are still in constant mode since I haven't changed them before. So, as I told just before, I will select the Z curve and I will start animating it. The idea is whenever the arm is swinging at its top speed forward, I will slightly bend it backward. I will break the articulation. This is something that is really used in stylized animation. And then it will reach its highest point. I will wait for one or two frames to make it going backward before it's totally bent forward so that we will have this slight delay in the rotation of the arm and it's gonna look really, really interesting. This is exactly the same method we use to animate hairs, clothes, tails, etc. called follow-through animation or overlapping animation. 
and this is typically the kind of detail in your animation with the bouncy squash and stretch we've added just before that will make it look good and appealing. Since we've started animating this character, we haven't been talking about timing and all this kind of stuff that you will have to use whenever you're animating action or when you are animating acting and stuff like this. But at least if you get used to make this kind of cycle properly, you will slowly get more confident and understand the very basis of animation. And what I, I wanted to show you through those videos is that even with a very beginner level, you can achieve cool stuff if you think about what you are doing. And if you applied what you've just learned in your motion design, in your mechanical animation or stuff like this, the fact that you can mix linear interpolation with acceleration, is in, is out, follow through, overlapping, you will make way better animation. And this is not something like super complicated. It's just bringing those little touch by thinking of what you are doing. Okay, so now I'm just doing exactly what I've done with the arm onto the end. I'm offsetting its motion compared to the forearm and I get this nice and swingy arm motion. And guess what? I will push this to the finger. So I will do exactly the same thing with the finger. I will animate a single swing with a little delay compared to the end rotation. So before, I might, so before I might be tweaking here and there a few curves, but it's not necessary. If you do this very basic overlap animation, you will get a good result. So then I will just move those fingers as I told you. And once I'm done, I will select all the bones of the arm. I will unhide every curve. I will select every keyframe. Copy them with Ctrl C and as you figured out, we will select the right arm and press Ctrl Shift V to pass those curves onto the right arm. So I select it, select everything, Ctrl Shift V. So now both arms are swinging at the same time. To offset the animation, we will as usual duplicate the keyframe, offset them by 24 frames and then offset everything back by 12 frames. And now I can see my character swinging his arm. So what I feel is that the arm are a bit too forward. But before I fix this, I will add a keyframe to the frame zero, convert all the keys to three as we did before and duplicate them on frame 24. Now I will select the arm bone and what I will do is select the Y Euler curve and I will offset it entirely on the Y axis. You can see that if I move it vertically on the graph editor, it will offset the arm back. So then I will select the right arm and do exactly the same thing. And guess what? From there, you are done with this work cycle animation. And let's be honest, it was not that hard and we have a pretty cool output. So this will be the end of the animation chapter. In the next videos, we will create the environment that you have seen in the final render. And we will render this and composite it in Blender. In the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video as much as you can. See you.